Facebook and messaging apps are still watching everything you do privately, and it is getting worse. Problem is that Instagram and Facebook inserted a tracking JavaScript code called Metapixel, which, according to Felix Kraus, gives Meta the power to follow users' behavior without their agreement. By using Metapixel, Facebook and Instagram users' private information, such as every button and link touched, text choices, screenshots, credit card information, passwords, and several other very important private details are exposed. One more problem is that Meta's present regulations conveniently keep consumers in the dark. And why? Because Meta's business has been impacted by Apple's app tracking transparency. Different from Meta, ATT demands that all applications obtain user authorization before monitoring them across other firms' apps and websites. But to advertise properly, Meta needs this information, and that's the reason why the company is very close to losing $10 billion in sales this year alone and currently is facing the worst period for the last 10 years. However, the important question is, what simple technique can protect your privacy from tracking codes? And generally, which apps are safe for its users? Let's find out. Apple's significant iOS privacy upgrade last year made it much more difficult for applications to follow user behavior outside their boundaries, but a new complaint claims that Facebook and Instagram parent firm Meta continued to snoop through a loophole. The complaint filed in the United States District Court for the Northern District of California argues that Meta circumvented Apple's new limits by monitoring users using Apple's in-app browser, which opens links within the app. The planned class action lawsuit might allow anyone impacted to join, including hundreds of millions of US users in Facebook's case. According to Felix Krause's research, both Instagram and Facebook for iOS utilize their own in-app browser rather than the one provided by Apple for third-party apps. Most applications load web pages using Apple Safari. However, Instagram and Facebook employ their own in-app browser to display websites within the app. Instagram and Facebook inserted a tracking JavaScript code called Metapixel into all links and web pages seen using their custom-built browser, which is still based on WebKit. Krauss discovered that with that code, Meta has complete flexibility to follow users' behavior without their explicit agreement. This enables Instagram to monitor everything that's happening on external websites without the users or the website provider's approval. The Instagram app injects a tracking code into every page shown, including when clicking on adverts. It allows them to monitor all user activities, such as every button and link touched, text choices, screenshots, and any form of inputs, such as passwords, addresses, and credit card information. As Krauss points out, firms like Meta must expand considerable effort to design and manage their own in-app browser, rather than rely on Apple's built-in Safari. According to Meta's developer portal, Metapixel is intended to track visitor activity on your website by analyzing all user actions within their custom-built browser. Unfortunately, there is no proof that Meta, the company that controls Instagram, has actively collected the user data it can gather. Klaus elaborated on his report, saying it is true that Facebook steals our passwords, addresses, and credit card numbers. No, he said he didn't demonstrate the specific data Instagram is gathering, but he did exhibit the type of data they might obtain without people knowing. As seen previously, if a firm can gain free access to data without asking the individual for permission, it will monitor it. This approach, however, is in breach of Apple's app tracking transparency ATT, policy. ATT demands that all applications obtain user authorization before monitoring them across other firms' apps and websites. Meta has frequently resisted Apple's objective of providing consumers the option of whether or not they want to be monitored. Meta ran a full-page newspaper ad in December 2020, criticizing Apple for the shift. Krauss claims he shared his results with Meta, who reacted by claiming they'd confirmed the issue but had yet to reply. Krauss claims he gave Meta two weeks' notice before going public with his results. The complaint accuses Meta of utilizing the in-app browser on Facebook and Instagram to avoid Apple's regulations against invasive tracking of users. According to the complaint, this enables Meta to intercept, monitor, and record its users' interactions and contacts with third parties, supplying Meta with data that it compiles, analyzes, and utilizes to increase its advertising income. In April last year, Apple released iOS 14.5, dealing a significant blow to social networks like Meta that relied on tracking users' activity for advertising purposes. In its earnings call, the firm notably mentioned the iOS changes as it prepared investors to adjust to the new normal for its ad targeting business, calling Apple's privacy changes a headwind that it would have to fight. Meta has been a strong opponent of Apple's ATT policy since its inception, stating that it will harm small companies that rely on targeted advertisements. 
Meta said that Apple was hindering small companies' potential to expand because if users opt out of monitoring, they are less likely to receive adverts that are tailored and recommended for them. Meta's business has been impacted by Apple's ATT framework, with a company likely to lose $10 billion in sales this year alone. In the case, two Facebook users claim that Meta is abusing Apple's regulations and state and federal privacy laws, such as the Wiretap Act, which makes it unlawful to intercept electronic conversations without authorization. A similar complaint, Mitchell vs. Meta Platforms Inc., was recently filed. The plaintiff stated they dispute Meta's explanation that the insertion of code is for security reasons because the other popular Meta application, WhatsApp, does not utilize the same method. They also point out that Meta doesn't include in-app browser monitoring in its off-Facebook activity settings, where users may see how their data is obtained from businesses or websites. Users may, for example, track data exchange when they use their Facebook login to access non-Facebook accounts on other websites. According to the allegations, there is no justification for Meta excluding this information from off-Facebook activity tracking, other than to increase earnings beyond what it would have otherwise realized. According to the lawsuit, Meta's present regulations purposely keep consumers in the dark. According to the complaints, Meta doesn't really inform Facebook users that clicking on links to third-party websites from within Facebook will automatically redirect the user to Facebook's in-app browser rather than the user's default web browser, or that Meta will track the user's activity and communications while on those sites. Since nothing alerts users to these facts, they are oblivious to the monitoring. Most are unaware that they are accessing a third-party website using Facebook's in-app browser. According to Krause's investigation, even iOS users in lockdown mode are not immune to in-app browser monitoring, and there is no option to opt out. He advised Meta to adjust Instagram and Facebook settings to behave more like WhatsApp and never edit third-party websites. The most transparent approach is to disable default in-app browsing and offer users the option of seeing links they click in specific browsers. A Meta spokesperson claimed in a statement that the changes were without merit and that the business would protect itself vigorously. The spokesman also said that Meta has carefully developed the in-app browser to respect customers' privacy preferences, including how data could be used for advertising. Apple's new iOS privacy prompt asks users if they want their activities recorded across other businesses' applications and websites. For example, when opening links within Facebook or Instagram, users who opt out may assume they are on an external web browser, but the corporation would undoubtedly argue the opposite. According to Kraus, TikTok's unique in-app browser for iOS accomplishes the same thing, allowing TikTok to watch all keyboard inputs and taps when a user interacts with a specific website, although TikTok has apparently denied that the code is used for harmful purposes. TikTok's in-app browser subscribes to all keyboard inputs when a person interacts with an external website, including any sensitive credentials like passwords and credit card information, and every tap on the screen. According to Krauss, in terms of the JavaScript code that TikTok injects, this is the technological equivalent of putting a keylogger on third-party websites. However, the researcher stressed that simply because an app injects JavaScript into external websites does not imply that the app is dangerous. A TikTok spokesman confirmed that the JavaScript code in issue but stated that it is exclusively used for debugging, troubleshooting, and performance analysis to guarantee an optimal user experience. According to TikTok's statement, they use an in-app browser, like other platforms, to deliver an ideal experience for users, but the JavaScript code in question is only used for debugging, troubleshooting, and performance monitoring of that experience, such as checking how fast a page loads or whether it crashes. According to Kraus, users who want to protect themselves against the potentially harmful use of JavaScript code in in-app browsers should visit a given link via the platform's default browser, such as Safari on the iPhone and iPad. Krauss claims to have developed a simple technique that allows anybody to determine whether an in-app browser injects JavaScript code while viewing a web page. According to the researcher, users only need to open the app they want to analyze, share the address inappbrowser.com somewhere inside the app, for example, in a private message to some other person, then tap on the link inside the app to open it in the in-app browser and read the details of the report displayed. Facebook's popularity has been plummeting for some time now, and it's precisely things like this that have led to it. Twitter co-founder Jack Dorsey took a dig at Facebook in text messages with Elon Musk. Looks like there's a verified account in the swamp of despair over there, Dorsey text on April the 6th. The text was made public as part of the pre-trial discovery process for Twitter's lawsuit against Musk and shows how the executive referred to the rival social network in private. It speaks volumes about how Facebook is perceived by some of the biggest names in the tech world. That's it for today. Subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell 